Hi, welcome along to another video. Links to the articles and the information shown will be in the information section of this video. We'll start with the Carnegie Climate Governance Initiative via the Carnegie Council. What kinds of insurance could apply to solar radiation modification? There's a discussion video. Governance of stratospheric aerosol injection. This campfire chat aim to provide insights into diverse viewpoints on the governance of stratospheric aerosol injection in a relatively informal, moderated, semi-structured discussion between experts. So if you want to listen to that campfire chat, there's a link to a YouTube video there. Who are the C2G funders? IKEA? Not very much though. These donations to them are in US dollars in millions. So the top one, V. Khan Rasmussen Foundation, 2020, $1.6 million. 2019, $1.6 million. 2018, $1.9 million. So there's a few million being chucked at these people. One of the people appearing in the campfire chat is someone from the solar radiation management governance initiative srmgi at the beginning of october brought you a video that mentions them via the good ventures website which is a philanthropic foundation and they received half a million dollars in 2015 for general support of the solar radiation management initiative and two million dollars in 2017 to support the solar radiation management governance initiative over three years over to utah pay attention america here we go again there is a notice of intent weather modification in the etv news for utah so this is a legal notification due to informed consent so it's gonna have to, have to be down to you guys again to let each other know if you've got people in Utah, make sure they know this is going on. The Emory Water Conservancy District intends to conduct weather modification programs in Utah to increase precipitation. The area in which the effects are intended to occur are in the higher elevation snowpack accumulation regions in portions of eastern San Pete and western Carbon and Emory counties. The operations may be conducted during portions of the period from December the 1st, 2020 to April the 15th, 2021. Weather modification operations will be conducted using automated liquid propane dispensers. So just to run through some of that again, it's to increase precipitation. It's going to happen sometime between December the 1st, 2020 and April the 15th, 2021. And it's going to be done with liquid propane. And I've mentioned this before in videos, for those of you, you that don't know, liquid propane, create when you spray that out of a plane, because it's temperature based obviously, you can create snow at temperatures of 10 degrees centigrade, that's uh, about 45 degrees Fahrenheit. So snow should be around 0 degrees centigrade, around 35 degrees Fahrenheit. So liquid propane enables you to do that at 10 degrees instead of 0 degrees centigrade. So that's why they're using liquid propane, just so you know. This has been published in the newspaper on October the 14th and the 21st, 2020. That's a legal notification. There's, unless people complain or say anything, unless people who are interested in this permit to contact the Utah Division of Water Resources and speak about this, they'll have people's informed consent to just go and modify the weather. Over to a website called Resilience. What must climate and energy policy really achieve? It's time for Climate Reality Check 2020. So this is about Australia. The Australian government is dangerously out of touch. The minister set the scene in the first low emissions technology statement 2020. And the minister has said strategy is based on technology, not taxes. And the government's efforts will focus on new and emerging technologies with the potential for transformational economic and emissions outcomes and the article authors comment if political aversion to emergency action continues the use of geoengineering techniques such as solar radiation management to buy time cooling the planet before emission reductions take effect 
must be seriously considered if they are shown to be of net benefit. So a bit pro geoengineering there, not very resilient. Over to the American Geophysical Union, and there's a new paper about stratospheric aerosol injection from the 14th of October. It's all there on the site. Abstract to monitor the success of solar radiation management. If you like CNN, CNN's video podcast from the 15th of October. Today's show reports the science behind cloud seeding. Over to the ETC group. They've got a good article about Bill Gates, his fossil fuel interests and funding for global climate engineering. Entitled The Sugar Daddy of Geoengineering. Good title. Worth a read. There's some articles in the United States media about the cloud seeding in Siberia to put out the wildfires. The links are in the info section, but we can't see them. In the United Arab Emirates, this happens regularly. They have launched a new grant for scientists to make it rain. On a history tip, first published in June 1955, large-scale experiment in weather modification in the United States. You can download the PDF from Nature. New York University has recently reported on an extensive cloud seeding experiment, Project SCUD, carried out along the eastern coast of the United States during 1953-1954 and sponsored by the Office of Naval Research. During January to April 1953 and December 53 through to April 54, Aircraft dropped 30 tons of dry ice into cyclonic storms lying between Florida and Massachusetts and in addition 250 pound of silver iodide was vaporized from 17 ground generators located between Florida and New York. The object of the trials was to determine whether cloud seeding could change the intensity or direction of developing storms 70 years ago. Finally, we finish up with an article from Harvard Magazine. That's about all we say on that. That was a roundup of some new stuff that's been going on in the geoengineering world, etc. As usual, take care, look after yourselves, and I'll see you next time.